All right, here we go. Episode six, Bloodborne. We're doing Father Gaston, Gaston, Gaston. I don't know. I've never played the video game. I know you're going to hate me. Gosh, it's on the list, but I just don't have time. I'm too busy painting minis. We're painting minis for you guys. We're, we're going hard in the paint. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one. And we're just, we're doing it. So we're just going. All right, if this is your first time at the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I'm going to be doing more miniatures from Bloodborne. We have so many more games coming out that I'm going to be doing. And I want you guys to enjoy it like I enjoy it. If you're enjoying this channel, why not hit subscribe? Let's watch these videos. Let's do it. All right. Uh, quick, easy steps. Nothing crazy. Let's go. All right. We're going to start by scraping all those nasty mold lines off of our miniature and we're doing that uh, it's typically like underneath the gun and a lot on the robes um, if this is your first time watching the channel or your returner i list everything that i use in the comments below including the paints i use if you need any of them just click the comments click on those links and i'll take you right to them We're gonna start off by spray painting it black. If you do not have an airbrush, because I'm using an airbrush, because I'm gonna do some batch painting for priming, uh, just use some regular black spray paint. It's flat. Uh, Citadel has a great product. Vallejo has a great product. And we're just gonna spray it with a base coat of black. After it's dry completely, we're gonna hit it from directly from the top with some white. Now, granted, I'm using my airbrush, but if you don't have an airbrush, go ahead and just hit it with some white spray paint and let it dry completely. We're going to start off by painting the coat. Now, you can technically do this with other portions of it, but I just want to get the coat knocked out as quickly as possible because that's kind of our focal point of the miniature. It's the biggest surface area on our miniature. So we're going to do that whole thing in Abaddon black, including the pants. Now, I did the pants later on because I realized that I wanted to do them black, but paint the, paint the pants black while you're doing the coat and the, I guess you could say, sash that's over top of them. Just follow what I'm doing and we're gonna hit that with all the black. All right, make sure we're hitting that hat with the black as well, and that should be it. Now again, you can see that I didn't paint the pants, but paint the pants black right here. And we'll cover it again if you, for some reason, didn't paint them black. We're going to dry brush on some Mechanica Standard Gray. Now, if this is your first time using a dry brush, you can use an old brush. It has a flat top or like an old makeup brush. Maybe your girlfriend or your wife or whoever has one laying around. And you're going to work it into the bristles and you're going to get almost all of it off. So like 90% off the bristles to, to a point where you can barely see it when it comes off that brush. And we're going to work over all of our black areas except for the pants. We're going to do something else with the pants later on. But we're going to hit all those raged areas with our mechanic standard gray. And we're just doing real light back and forth strokes as we catch up all those raised areas on the hat, the coat, and the front portion that's kind of hanging down. Next, we're gonna work some Dawnstone into our dry brush. Now we're going to take our Dawnstone and we're going to do the same thing, just lightly going back and forth on those raised areas and the edges of our miniature. If we're getting it on the other places we haven't painted yet, that's exactly why we're doing it at this stage, because we just want to get it done and over with and work on our other portions here in a little bit. Yeah. 
And the last dry brush color we're gonna do is a little long beard gray. And we are only gonna hit the most raised portions on top of our miniature. So the shoulders, a little bit on the back, the hat, and that's it. We're just doing where the sun, if it was directly noon above you, where it would hit and be the lightest. And we're gonna take that coat and we're gonna dumb it all down with a little Nolan oil and that's gonna desaturate our bright colors and make them kind of blend in. It's a nice little trick that I like to use to kind of speed the painting process up when you have a ton of miniatures to do. Now we're gonna start with the face and the hands. The face, he has a little white goatee that we're gonna hit up here in a minute and the hands. Now you're gonna notice that I don't hit the hands in this specific shot. And I can't tell you why. Maybe because I drank a bottle of wine. I don't know, I can't tell you. But I can tell you that uh, hit the hands and hit the face. I'm gonna take some Celestra Gray and we are going to hit the scarf that is around his neck area. That scarf also is around the back, which we're also gonna paint. Uh, just be a little careful because the collar pops out a little bit on that if you're looking at the left-hand side below the face. So just be very cognizant of that as it's sitting there. And make sure you hit those blindfolds that are above or on top of his eyes, I should say. For the hair and the goatee, we're gonna get a little Corax white in there, which is kind of, it's a little bit brighter white than the Celestia Gray, but if you're looking at the card art, there's not a lot on it, and they're kind of mundane colors, so nothing crazy. For the brassy looking portion of our chest area and our buckle, we're gonna use a little warp lock bronze. And if for some reason you didn't listen to me in the front, like you skip forward during the front portion of the video, we're gonna be using some Abaddon Black for the pants. Um, and that's all we're gonna be doing. For the little leather belt, we're gonna use some dryad bark. The undershirt, we're gonna hit with some Skaven Blight Dinge, just to kind of make it a color variation. You can't really see in the card art, but I just felt like let's get a little bit of a two-tone dark color going here. For all of our metal pieces, we are gonna be using our 
best metal color, which is Lead Belcher. And that's gonna go for the axe, the spike on top of the axe. The top portion of our pistol, I guess you could say. Um, the metal portion on the handle and our trigger guard for our pistol. We also wanna hit up the inner portion of our axe handle as that's the same thing I did with the uh, sock lever hunter and the hunter, or the blade hunter or the axe hunter, whatever one it was. So just go ahead and follow that along and take your time. Obviously, if you mess up, it's not a big deal. If it's on something, just try not to mess up on the stuff we've already painted. And we're just taking our time for the metal bits underneath the cloth that is kind of wrapped around our axe. The wood portion of our pistol, we're gonna paint in Rhinox hide. Just be a little careful, and if we mess something up like I'm gonna do in this next shot, uh, we can fix it real quick. And I'm just going back over here and fixing some spots that I had gotten some Rhinox hide on and just kind of sprucing it up a little bit. Now here I'm painting the hands with Buckman's Glow. Again, I missed this when I originally uh, painted the skin color. Just be a little careful because his hands are wrapped in a cloth. So just kind of go over that as we're painting along here. Uh, you should have done this in the beginning like I kind of said, but hey, if you missed it like I did, just go back here and paint that through. For the gold portion of the axe, we're going to use a little Balthazar gold. And for all of our cloth pieces, to include the one on the handle, handle and the blade itself of the axe, we're going to use a little Steel Legion Drab. So it's basically the same thing we did for the Hunter, Axe Hunter. Yes, there you go. We also want to use it for the cloth covering each hand. And that's it, we're going to move on to shading. We're going to paint all of our metal portion, all of the basically the entire thing, even the white portion with some Nolan oil. And be a little cognizant when you're going over the skin because the skin we're gonna hit with Reichlin Flush Shade here in a minute. And we're just going over that. If you get a little bit on the coat that we've already done, it's not a big deal. We've already kinda doled that down a little bit, so not a big deal at all. For all of our skin bits, we're gonna use some Reichlin Flesh Shade. Again, if you get this on the Steel Legion Drab that is on the cloth, not a big deal at all.
After all the shades, let that dry completely and then we'll move on to the highlights in the next step. Our first color we're going to use to highlight is Bugman's Glow on the Skin and we're only going to be hitting the raised areas. We do not want to get any of this paint in the recesses that the shade has worked its way into, just the raised areas. We're going to do a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone, and again, only those raised areas, just a little bit less than what you just painted on with Bugman's Glow. We're just kind of building up those highlights. We're going to do some pure Cadian flesh tone and again just the raised areas and the what we have done so far just a little bit less than what we had done so far. We are now going to take a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Flayed One Flesh and just highlighting just little bits of this because that Flayed One Flesh really whitens out that Cadian Flesh Tone. So just little bits, tops of the knuckles, the nose, a little bit on the chin and that is all we're doing for the skin color. We are going to take our Celestial Gray color and we are going to highlight all of our Celestial Gray portions. Uh, we're only going to be hitting the raised areas of our Celestial Gray part as we want those uh, Nolan Oil to sink into the recesses and just stay there and give it that nasty grimy dirty look that the miniature is supposed to look like kind of matching the card art. Just be a little careful when we're hitting the blindfolds as we just did the skin. We're going to do all of our Corex white portion of the hair and all we want to do is take a small brush using a size 2-0 brush and we we're just picking out little strands of hair with that Corex white. It's going to look bright at first but as it dries, it's going to really kind of dull down and just give you that nice, dirty, old man looking hair. I apologize if you have that type of hair. We're going to reapply some of our Warp Lock Bronze portion of our front as the Nolan Oil really took it over so we just kind of need to brighten that back up a little bit again. For all of our metal bits we're going to use some Ruin Fang Steel so that's going to be the top portion of our gun, the trigger guard and the metal portion on the bottom of our gun. Um, for the axe, we're going to do all of the edges and the top portion of our spike, I guess you could say. And if you want to hit the inner portion of the axe where he's grabbing onto, you can, but I decided not to. We're 
we're going to take our original Balthazar gold and just hit all of the gold portion right there. Being cognizant not to get it into the lettering that the wash got into. Now we're going to take some Steel Legion Drab and just kind of get those cloth portions brightened up a little bit. If you wanted to, you can mix a little used Shab de Bone in there to brighten it up a little bit. I decided not to, but you can. That is a good option if you wanted to do that. For the pants, we're just going to take a little bit of Skaven Blight Dinge and hit some of the raised areas on the pants. So as you're following the creases in the pants, just hit those raised portions and that kind of gives it a little bit of brightness and kind of gives you a little bit different look than the dry brush we did for the coat. And that's the only reason I did it, just to kind of give it a little different look. We also want to use that on the boots as well as we kind of want it to look a little bit brighter than having the wash on there. So didn't hit the boots before, hit it now with some Skaven Blight Dinge, and then we are about done. Go ahead and hit that base with that Abaddon Black, our favorite part of painting miniatures, as we're effing done, Cotton. Uh, it took me about two to three coats, so I wasn't actually done in this shot. Yeah. And that's it, you're done. You crushed it, look how good you did. Look how impressed your friends and girlfriend or boyfriend is gonna be when they see that and like, oh man, you are awesome. Not a lot of steps, not a lot of work, but it looks pretty good for going on the tabletop and that's all we care about. We're not trying to win awards, we're just trying to get this damn thing on the table. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching, taking time out of your busy day and your schedule to watch this video. It means a lot to me. And obviously the more people that subscribe, the more people that watch, it encourages me to do more videos. If you are really liking this, and if you want to see more, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That's just gonna grow this channel a little bit more. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Paint on.